case you don't know this, we did it on purpose. You ought to be ready to break out in song at any given second when you're serving the Lord. And we have a wonderful, wonderful Savior. Turn over in your song books. It's page 491. Brother Bob, Mike's always putting them up, and we're grateful for that. Looking forward to hearing Brother Mike. Can he preach tonight? Turn with me. We'll sing the first and the second and the fourth verse of uh, Shelter in the Time of Storm. distracted by being in your home all the time used to getting out and going but we want you to remember to be faithful in reading your bible and pray can i tell you that's two of the biggest things that you can do stay faithful in your personal devotions with god we're grateful for those of you that watch the videos and make comments we want you to send us some pictures this week okay you can send it to my email jana's email you can send it to text to me or to jana you can put it on the private Facebook messaging that uh, group and send us a picture maybe of you last year Easter whatever you're doing right now what how you're dressed up when you're watching the church services we're going to have a little fun tonight during our services on Sunday night I mean and we're grateful to be able to share some of that with you we also want to remind you that hang in there I had one of my friends call me this week and said he was walking into the house and he heard his wife carrying on a conversation just in the he walked in and he said, uh, who are you talking to? She said, I'm talking to the dog. There's nobody else to talk to, so I'm talking to the dog. He said, okay. He said, you know what, preacher? We don't have a dog. <laughs> so you get pretty desperate, aren't you? So tell you what, take care, pray, pray for each other. Remember the prayer requests we sent out. And tonight we were grateful to have a quartet that was recorded in our church uh, a little while back. And I think you'll enjoy this, but we also want to remind you to listen for Brother Mike's message coming up as soon as that quartet is over. I sing the mighty power of my There's no 
tempest blow by order from thy throne. While all that borrows life from thee is ever in thy care, and everywhere that man can be, Good evening, everyone. I hope everyone is doing well. Hope you have adjusted to life in your house. Social distancing is what I want to talk to you about tonight. Uh, I, I talked to you last week a little bit about G.K. Chesterton. He's a, a, a writer, and uh, he was asked, he and three other writers were asked one time, if you were stranded on an island, what book would you like to have? Everybody expected G.K. Chesterton to say he would have he would like to have the Bible, but uh, one of the one of the writers said I would like to have the complete works of William Shakespeare, and the other writer said he would like to have the Bible, and G.K. Chesterton said I would like to have Thomas's Guide to Practical Shipbuilding, and that's a good idea. We feel like we're on an island out there right now. I hope you uh, are, are at least getting out some and waving at your neighbors. Uh, that's something through all of this that I see a lot of people are actually out in their neighborhood and meeting some of their neighbors for the first time. But uh, so what is social distancing? Well, we all know we're, we're supposed to stay six feet apart from everybody. What are you what are you doing to social distance? Well, let me show you what I'm doing there right now. I brought prop with me. This is my microphone boom pole. And uh, I use this all during sports so that we when we had a big crowd around a uh, 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 somebody we needed to interview that the reporter could get the microphone in there and we could hear. But now with social distancing, this is my social distancing pole and I can uh, stand six feet away from you to interview you. And uh, that's, that's what we're doing, trying to uh, keep our distance from people. Uh, it's odd, I don't like it, but it works. Uh, <clears throat> social distancing is an interesting concept and, and something that we're starting to uh, get accustomed to. You know, people say, I still want to shake somebody's hand. Just had somebody try to shake my hand and I said, I'm sorry, I'll shake your hand, but I, I'm a guy that likes to shake hands. I use two hands to shake hands. There's usually one in your hand and one on your shoulder, patting you on the back, whatever. I, I'm a, I'm a two handed guy. And I, I, I saw that meme about, uh, you know, that I'm not all right. I'm a, I'm a hugger and I, I get that. I, I'm I'm kind of a hugger too. And, and this time we're not even allowed to shake hands. We, it's, it's tough for us. So pray for us on that. But uh, <clears throat> all right. So what does the Bible say about social distancing? It's actually very biblical. I bet you didn't know that. In Leviticus chapter 13, verse 46, and they're actually talking about, uh, uh, they're talking about, Leprosy, I'm sorry, I was lost my train of thought. All the days wherein the plague shall be in him, he shall be defiled. He is unclean, he shall dwell alone. Without the camp shall his habitation be. So when, the, when you ended up with leprosy, they, they put you out, out of the camp. Outside, you had to live out by yourself and social distance from the rest. So it is biblical. And they, they did that on purpose because they didn't want everybody else to catch the, the disease. Same thing we're doing right now. So social distancing goes all the way back to the very beginning. So uh, now we are, we are not being asked to move out of our city. We're just asked to stay in our house. Thank goodness, right? Uh, and, and these days with our technology, we can still get together like this. And that is a wonderful thing, right? So I wanted to talk about some people in the Bible that use social distancing. And the first person that I can think of that used social distancing a lot was Jesus Christ. Uh, open your Bible, Matthew 4. Matthew 4, chapter 1, uh, verse 1 and 2 says, <clears throat> Then Jesus was led up to the spirit uh, of the Spirit into the wilderness to be tempted of the devil. And when he had fasted 40 days and 40 nights, he was afterward and hungered. 
Uh, some of you uh, may not have been to the grocery store in a while. You might be hungering for some of that stuff. But uh, uh, think about think about this. You know, this was right after Jesus was baptized uh, by John the Baptist. John the Baptist also used a little social distancing. He went out in the wilderness and he would uh, uh, lived out in the wilderness and ate the locusts and the honey. And uh, <clears throat> then he preached the word of God. He preached he preached about Jesus coming. And uh, this is right after that. Jesus goes for 40 days. He fasted in the wilderness. Uh, and it, my the little footnote in my Bible says uh, that, that when we read, this is the 40 days is a testing period. And it comes from Deuteronomy, uh, Deuteronomy 8, verse 2. Uh, I'll read that in a second. But it says that God led Israel into the wilderness to humble and prove them. He wanted to find out whether or not they would really obey him. And we too will be tested because we know that testing will come and we should be alert and ready for it. Well, our test is here. We're being tested. And uh, Deuteronomy 8, 2, it, it says, And thou shalt remember all the way which the Lord thy God led thee these 40 years in the wilderness to humble thee and to prove thee to know what was in thine heart, whether thou wouldest, be, wouldest keep his commandments or no. 40 years, that's a long test, a long test. I, I hope we don't have to do, endure 40 years of test. Uh, but some, sometimes God leads us into tests and we, you know, we can't have a testimony without a test. So hopefully there will be lots of testimony that comes out of this test. We're already seeing lots of things happen that uh, are amazing. We'll talk about those in a second, but uh, uh, the other other part, other scripture in the Bible that talks about where Jesus social distanced himself and what he used social distancing for. Uh, in Luke chapter four, verse 42, it says, and when it was day, he departed and went into a desert place and the people sought him and came unto him and stayed him that he should not depart from them. He went away to pray. And, and Mark six forty six says, and when he sent them away, he departed into a mountain to pray. Luke 9, 28, and it came to pass about an eight days after these sayings, he took Peter and John and James and went up into a mountain to pray. And then uh, again in Matthew 6, verse 6, the uh, disciples are asking Jesus, how do, how do we pray? Teach us to pray, Master, is what they said. It says in verse 6, Matthew 6, 6, but thou... When thou prayest, enter into thy closet, and when thou hast shut the door, pray to thy father which is in secret, and thy father which seeth in secret shall reward thee openly. Jesus used social distancing to gain spiritual closeness. That's what we need to do as well. Right now is a time for us when we're alone. We can do one of two things. We can either be depressed about all that situation, or we can look for the opportunities to make things better in our life. We have the opportunity right now to really get into the word of God. I talked to you uh, on my last sermon about roots and find, and getting into the word of God to get those roots of faith to help you in these times when we're feeling alone and we're feeling uh, scared and all the rampant fear of, of what this virus will do and, and things, you know, God is still in control. We know that and we have that faith like I talked about, but uh, 40 days was a time of testing. Uh, and, and shouldn't we, could we, could we be in this for 40 days? It's possible. We could, I could, I could see us last 40 days in this uh, kind of shelter in place. So, uh, why not use that time to seek some closeness with God? Uh, and, and like I said, testimony starts with a test. So use this test. But, but think about what this has done. We've shut down all of our distractions. There's no bars open. All the sports are gone. Everything, schools shut down. We, we have all the noise that, that, that fills our life is gone. We have an opportunity to talk to God, to listen for God. Uh, and and we, have, we see, you know, I see that it's brought families together. 
I've seen more families out riding bikes together in the last week than I've seen in the past 10 years. Uh, it, you know, moms and dads riding bikes with their kids, not just the kids out riding by themselves, but they're out together uh, as a family. Uh, people are, like I said, people are meeting their neighbors. Uh, I, I, I'm very fortunate in my job with Channel 11 that I'm not having to cover a lot of the negative part of all this and the, and the sad, scary part, but I get to look for the positive stories. And, and I thank God for that. I, I know I'm a positive person and I just, I, I don't like to deal in those heavy news stories. I have done them. I've worked through those, uh, but God has blessed me with the opportunity to tell good stories. And I know that that is God's blessing on me and, and what he's allowing me to do. Uh, this week, we just started a segment. I've been doing these stories for a while, finding uh, you know, the people that have the little parade for the, the girl's birthday party. They, everybody in the neighborhood came by and honked and waved to her. She couldn't have a birthday party. Uh, it's so cool to see what people are doing. New, new ways of inventing, making people happy is, is really a blessing to all of us. Uh, you know. Uh, to see the videos of the, the uh, animals being uh, given field trips around the zoo. Yesterday we had a video of a, uh, uh, I can't even remember what it's called, little little uh, strange animal, uh, Australian thing, I think. I don't know what they are. It's, it looks like a big rat, but uh, they had it on a leash and were taking it through the, uh, through the aquarium and uh, the little otters were swimming into the, the glass and looking at the, this strange creature and it was looking at the otters and wanted to play with the otters. And so, you know, it's, it's just interesting that the way people are finding ways to, uh, to entertain us during this time when we're stuck at home. Uh, I saw one family that couldn't go to uh, Disney world. So they had the, the, uh, they had the virtual ride of, of splash mountain up on the, on the screen and had the little girl in the, in a laundry basket and was wiggling her around and squirting water on her and, and she was just having a great time. And, and it's nothing like Disney World, but it, it it will be a great memory when this is all over. They'll they'll talk about the time that they didn't get to go and how they, they uh, spent time with their family. Uh, <clears throat> we've talked a bunch here at the church about how Facebook was all church. People are coming to know Christ because God's word is going out through the internet. It says, go ye into all the world. And guess what we're doing right now? We're going into all the world through the internet. People all over the world are tuning in to services they might never have tuned in to before and listening to pastors preach the word of God and talk about the love of Christ and, and what it means to them. So uh, there are three basic questions that everybody asks in life. Who is God? Who am I? And why am I here? What is our purpose in life? What did God create us for? Well, Psalms 156, one, excuse me, 150 verse six. Let me flip over there real quick. Psalms has a lot of great stuff about why we were created. If I can find the right verse here. Psalms 150 verse six says this. Still flipping. I know Brother Coley's going to have it up here on the side for you, but I want to read it straight from the Word of God for you because I believe that reading it right out of your Bible is a special thing. If you have your Bible at home, make sure you open it up because that's where you find it and prove that it's there, right? Let everything that hath breath praise the Lord. Praise ye the Lord. That's what we are created for. We're created to praise Him to worship him, to get into his word. <clears throat> and that's what our life is all about. Uh, let's think of some other people in the Bible that uh, use social distancing to gain that spiritual closeness. Who can you think of? Can you think of anybody off the top of your head? Just shout it out, type it in, type it in the comments. And uh, I can give you the first one that I thought of, Brother Bob preached about him a couple weeks ago, Elijah. Elijah is one of my favorite characters in the Bible. So many great stories from Elijah. And, uh, but he went out, he, he, he was actually running, hiding in fear 
He social distanced. He got away because he thought Jezebel was going to kill him. But God came to him and spoke to him in that still, small voice. We have that opportunity to listen for God's still, small voice, to calm our fears, to help us through these times. Uh, that is very important to us, and, and I think it's very important to you. If you don't know Christ, if you can't hear his voice, you need to get to know Christ. You can do that by reading in his word and, and asking him to be your savior, come into your heart and forgive you of your sins. Jonah, Jonah spent three days in the belly of the whale. You think he had a little time to social distance and think about what he, how, how close he would like to be to God? He was close to God. He was a prophet. You know what a prophet means? Prophet is God give him word to give to other people. So he was getting messages straight from God. And the message was go to Nineveh and preach. He didn't like that message. So he said no. And he decided to go the other way. Right? We all know the story. Uh, and he's on the ship. And the ship is, is in a storm. And it's going crazy. And everybody on this ship asks, why is the storm going on? And Jonah finally answers and tells them, it's because of me. And so they throw him overboard and he's swallowed by a fish. Look in Jonah chapter, <clears throat> actually uh, chapter two, but uh, I'm going to read one verse from Jonah chapter uh, six, uh, six, I'm sorry, two six in just a second, if I can get to Jonah. I should have marked my Bible, but I don't preach for very long, so you can take a few seconds to uh, look it up in your Bible as well. Uh, in, in Jonah chapter one, the last verse is, now the Lord had prepared a great fish to swallow up Jonah, and Jonah was in the belly of the fish three days and three nights. And then we jump to ch chapter two. What does it say? Then Jonah prayed unto the Lord his God out of the fish's belly. He had a little time to think. He had a little time away from all of the everything else, all the noise. He was probably a little scared, didn't know what was going on. But he prayed out of the belly of a fish. And in, in verse six, what does he say about what happened to him? I went down to the bottoms of the mountains. The earth with her bars was about me forever. Yet hast thou brought up my life from corruption, O Lord my God. He knew that he should have died. That's what he wanted. But God didn't want that for him. And, and through this, we feel like we're in the bottoms. We're in the valley right now. Some of us in our life, we feel like we're down, all the way down in the valley and there's no way out. Well, that's not true. There is a way out. It's never easy. I, I hike with the scouts all the time. And when we go for hikes, there's ups and downs. And we go up the hill and we go down the hill. And you get down in the valley, going down and, and you get in the valley and then all of a sudden you look up and you got another big hill up in front of you. Well, you just take a big deep breath and you keep stepping one step at a time. But when you get to the top, when you get to the top of that mountain, the view is so spectacular. Everybody always stops when they get to the top of the mountain because number one, they've accomplished something. They get back to the top and they can see. They can see for all around. When you're down in the valley, you can't see very far. You can only see what's right in front of you. And that's usually a big mountain or a big hill. But when you get to the top, you can look out and you can see what the see everything. It seems like you can see for miles from the top of some of those mountains when you hike to the top. Uh, but that's that's where we are. We're in the valley, and it's not gonna be easy to hike up the mountain. But we got to hike back up the mountain and get to the top. That's what we're. That's what God wants us to do. God is is there waiting for us. He's with us all every step of the way. But when we get up there, we can see God's handiwork. We can see the beauty, right? One of the other people that's practiced social distancing, Daniel. Daniel was a man of prayer. Uh, again, I, I I do a lot of lessons from Daniel because he just. He's a, a, an amazing character. I, I hear lots of sermons about Daniel because he's one of those people that we could emulate. He wouldn't let anything get between him and God ever. And in Daniel chapter six, you guys know the story of Daniel and the lion's den too. Uh, 
they were going to throw him into the lion's den if he prayed to his God, which they knew he did every day. They knew that the, the others were so jealous of him, they wanted him out of there. And uh, all the other the presidents and governors sought to, to kill him. And in Daniel chapter 6, verse 10, when they had made the, the king had made the decree that anybody that worships anything except for uh, he, the king, then they were going to be thrown in the lion's den. Well, Daniel, now when Daniel knew that the writing was signed, he went into his house and his windows being opened in his chambers toward Jerusalem, he kneeled on his knees three times a day and prayed and gave thanks before God as he did aforetime. He did not stop his prayer life because of any rule or regulation. He knew that God was there and God would provide and that God would take care of him. And when the king found out that he was going to have to throw Daniel in there, guess what? The king knew that his God would provide too. God is always there, has been, and always will be. Uh, he'll provide for us through this time to get through this. We just have to be patient. Aren't you glad you get to spend your time at home on your couch and not in a lion's den, right? Or, or up on a mountain uh, with, with in a cave uh, or in the belly of a whale, right? We shelter in place. Those are pretty good words. I like the word shelter because the Bible tells us over and over God that God is our shelter. He is our refuge. Uh, Psalm 61, three, flip over there real quick. 60 Psalms, I told you, has full of great stuff for, for us in this time. Psalm 61, three. Keep getting to Proverbs instead of Psalms. But, all right, Psalm 61. Psalm 61, 3 says, For thou hast been a shelter for me, a strong tower from the enemy. A strong tower. Those are, those are great words. A shelter. When we're shelter in place, let's shelter in God. Shelter in his arms, Right? Uh, it's Psalm 62, 7 says, in, the God is my, in God is my salvation and my glory, the rock of my strength, and my refuge is in God. My refuge, our shelter and our refuge. And in, it, uh, in Psalms 91, Psalms 91 is pretty cool. Uh, the, whole ver the whole chapter is about uh, God's protection. Psalm 91 one says, he that dwelleth in the secret place of the most high shall abide under the shadow of the almighty. What better place to be than under the shadow of God? In, in the shadow of God means you're pretty close, right? If you're, if you're in his shadow, and the, the little note on my Bible that says the theme of chapter 31 is God's protection in the midst of danger. God does not promise a world free from danger, but it does promise his help whenever we face danger. Those are important words that we have to go through things. The God doesn't promise us that we won't go through things. He just promises that he will be there with us as we go through them. And that's important to remember. Uh, and, and then in verse two and three, it says, I will say of the Lord, he is my refuge and my fortress, my God in him will I trust. Surely he shall deliver thee from the snare of the fowler and from the noisome pestilence. So he's there. And repeat with me after this. Turn to the person next to you and say, in him will I trust. In him will I trust. That's what we need to remember. As I said before, testimony starts with a test. We're going through a test. And what greater testimony would there be than to say, uh, you distanced yourself from the worldly things and got closer to God during your time alone. Uh, God wants to hear from us. I see this verse posted a lot, and you've probably seen it too, 2 Chronicles 7, 14. And I'll just read it here. It says, in my people, if my people, which are called by my name, shall humble themselves and pray and seek my face, turn from their wicked ways, then will I hear from heaven and will forgive their sins and will heal their land. People are, are, are claiming that verse through all of this. And we need a healing in our land right now. We need people to come back to Christ. He wants to hear from us. Some of you haven't prayed in a while. I know you're starting to pray now. 
And God just wants to hear from you. He doesn't care what your prayer is. He wants to hear from you. And just like Jonah, Jonah was in the belly of a whale and God heard his cry, right? Uh, uh, my, my favorite time in the morning is as I'm, I sit down to, to you know, get my, my shoes and stuff on, my little dogs, Peanut and Scout, will be right on either side of me, just begging to be petted and, and just want some love in the morning. They, they, they got to get loved up in the morning before we take off for work. And uh, I think we need to do the same thing with God. We need to be right there, just like the, the, when, when, I, when I saw him this morning, he was, he was, I was not close enough to him yet, and he was up on his back legs just begging me to come over so I could pet him. And uh, I think we, we need to be like that too. We need to be seeking out God, seeking him to, uh, to give us some love through this time. Uh, you know, <clears throat> social distancing, we, we, we talked about what that really is. And social distancing is that they're telling us to stay six feet apart. Well, that right there is about six feet from fingertip to fingertip. Christ did that for us when he died on the cross. He put those arms out six feet across to die for our sins. Uh, one thing I saw this week that I think is a good idea. Uh, I, I, I saw lots of good ideas, but this one I thought was pretty cool. And it was to write a thank you letter to God. Nothing is better than putting down on, on paper what God has blessed you with. To thank him for those blessings. In this time when we're worried about all kinds of stuff, we're forgetting about the many blessings that we have in Christ. So take the time. That's your homework assignment, by the way. Your homework assignment, write a thank you letter to God. Just sit down and write out the blessings. We sing that song, count your many blessings and see what God has done. We can see the times in our life when God was right there beside us. God's always beside us, but sometimes we forget that he's right there beside us. He can be right there beside us right now to help us through this. If you don't know Christ as your personal savior, get to know him. Read the word of God, read through Romans. Romans tells us that we're all sinners. We've all come short of the glory of God. But if that we ask forgiveness for those sins and believe in Christ who died on that cross, that he would come into our life and be our savior. Let's bow our head. Lord, I just thank you for this time to come to offer your word to those that are watching and listening. Lord, I pray that each and every heart in some way was touched by something that uh, you gave me to, to say to them. Lord, we praise you for all that you're doing. We praise you. We know that you're still in control. Lord, we pray that you would find a way to, to end this thing. Lord, we pray that you would uh, uh, show your hand in that, that, that people would have no doubt that God is in control and that God took care of this. Lord, we praise you for that. I praise you for our family that's out watching, our church family that's out watching this uh, on Facebook. Lord, we pray for each and every one of them. Lord, keep us all healthy. Bring us back together sometime to worship you together. Lord, we can't wait for that day to happen. We praise you and thank you for all that you do. In Jesus' name we pray, amen.